Alrighty, let's talk about osteoarthritis. So osteoarthritis is also known as a degenerative joint disease. It is a progressive disease of articulating joints, which means any joints that move. It's most common in weight-bearing joints like the hips, uh, the back, the knees, etc. And in high-stress joints or ones that are used frequently like the hands and the feet. So we especially see this in the hands. Risk factors for uh, osteoarthritis are age, so older is more likely, um, genetics, and use of the joints. So again, these high use, high frequency joints are more likely to have problems. Problem is we can't really do much about that. We have to function and we need our joints to do that. Now osteoarthritis varies in stages from stage one to stage four. So stage zero is a perfectly normal joint with plenty of cartilage, um, plenty of synovial fluid, no damage to the bones all the way to stage four, which has uh, degraded a lot of the cartilage, we've lost a lot of the fluid, and we've had damage to the bone itself. Think of this like wearing tread down on a tire. The more you skid and squeal your tires and burn rubber, the faster that tread gets worn down and the higher likelihood of a blowout. Just looking at this bone, you can imagine how painful this gets as the patient progresses through this stage of osteoarthritis. Now, most of your patients will be being seen by you for other reasons, but they'll have osteoarthritis. So we need to know what to look for. First is that they will have joint pain that is relieved with rest. This is, this is one thing that separates it from rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis is that this pain tends to be relieved with rest in osteoarthritis, whereas pain in RA is continuous. We also see that the patient develops these nodes on their joints. Now, this is where the bone's been irritated. It's trying to repair itself and it's inflamed specifically in the hands. They are called Heberden's nodes and Bouchard's nodes. Now, the only difference between the two is that uh, Heberden's nodes affects distal joints and Bouchard's nodes affects proximal joints. That is the only difference. So the way I remember this is B for body. So the Bouchard's nodes are closer to the body and he, like if you're pointing at someone and you're pointing and saying he did it, then you use the tip of your finger. So Heberden's nodes are the distal and Bouchard's nodes are closer to the body, they're proximal. Now, patients with this significant uh, joint pain and inflammation are going to be stiff and they're gonna have difficulty standing up, going from sitting to standing. They're, you might even hear them like, oh, like aching when they stand up um, because it's painful and stiff. And then they may also experience crepitus in their joints. Crepitus is like a cracking, grating feeling. Now patients may feel it, but it can also be heard sometimes. So if you ever get a chance to meet me in person, ask to listen to my knees because they have some pretty epic crepitus. Again, the knees are this weight bearing and high stress joints. So they're highly likely to develop some sort of osteoarthritis. So what do we do for these patients? Well, there's topical analgesics they can use like uh, topical steroids or even things like lidocaine patches, or they could use um, any kind of muscle rub or muscle pain relief cream to as a topical um, help for pain. We can also give them NSAIDs, which are really good to decrease inflammation. NSAIDs, if you just wanna remember, are great for bone pain. So whether it's dental pain is teeth or bones, or it's bone pain like this, NSAIDs are really, really great for that. Um, and then we can also give them any uh, muscle relaxants to help ease uh, pain or any kind of muscle spasms around that joint. Now, the other thing we can do is steroid injections. Now you can see here, we've lost a lot of the space between this joint. And so this bone is gonna be rubbing against each other. They're gonna be bone on bone. So what the doctors will do is they'll inject corticosteroids into this joint space here to help decrease some of the pain and the inflammation. The problem is it is only temporary. So a lot of these patients end up coming back for steroid injections every three to six months. Now, as with any other type of musculoskeletal injury, we can also do heat and cold therapy and make sure we arrange for periods of rest since we know their pain is relieved with rest. Now, this may be relatively obvious, but our nursing priority concepts for a patient with osteoarthritis are comfort and mobility. We want to address their pain and we want to make sure that they're able to get around safely and okay. Make sure you check out the care plan attached to this lesson to see more. 
So let's do a quick recap of osteoarthritis. It is a degenerative joint disease that is progressive and involves a loss of cartilage and fluid around the joints, as well as irritation of the bones and bone spurs. It most commonly affects high stress joints like hands and feet or weight bearing joints like the hips, knees, and back. They're gonna have pain in their joints that's usually relieved with rest. You'll see Heberden's and Bouchard's nodes, stiffness, um, and crepitus in the joints. We want to give analgesics and anti-inflammatory medications. Again, NSAIDs are really good for this. And we want to make sure we provide frequent rest periods to help alleviate some of their symptoms. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.